Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jason Craig and with Jackie Richards we created this um, PowerPoint presentation on visual impairments. I'll start with a few statistics uh, from 2013. 7,327,800 people uh, were reported to have severe visual impairments in the U.S. Of those, 60,393 were students who um, were eligible to receive some accommodating reading materials in their schools. More statistics that further drives home the point that we need to be aware of not just visual impairments, but, but basically all the different types of learning disabilities. Um, but some statistics on visual impairments, 40% of working age adults with significant visual impairments were employed in 2013. That leaves 60% of them without work. $36,500 a year is what most visually impaired people live on. And 1,098,100 visually impaired people aged 21 to 64 live below the poverty line. Now, an education is the key to bringing yourself out of poverty, to uh, find the jobs that pay more, that provide a living. So when you see statistics like this, it does kind of drive home the point that we as educators really do have quite the responsibility and we should be assisting these types of students with everything that we can in order to allow them to reach their goals in life. Now I'll briefly talk about uh, some different types of visual impairments. Now a lot of these I can't even pronounce. I will do my best uh, things like amblyopia, which is lazy eye, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, macular degeneration, trachoma. There's also color blindness and then just various levels of vision problems, farsighted, nearsighted. And within those, there are going to be different levels of farsightedness and nearsightedness. Now, a lot of these, you may say, well, that only really affect older people. That's not true. Um, all of these can affect uh, students in your class. So it's good to be aware that there are multiple problems, not just one type of blindness, uh, but there's different levels of it, different types of issues, diseases, um, things that are wrong with kids' vision that we need to be aware of. And, you know, once we become familiar with that student and their issues, finding the right accommodation for them is key. Now I'd like to go over um, some different strategies that we can use in the classroom in order to help students that are visually impaired uh, reach their potential. Um, now it's imperative that you discover the type of visual impairment that the student has. You know, you don't want to be working with a far-sighted student um, presenting things to them that a nearsighted student uh, would need accommodations for. Um, and then you're going to want to come up with some specific strategies. Now obviously um, using Braille text uh, for students that you know are diagnosed as being legally blind they can't see anything let alone the, the words on the page and that's with corrective lenses with some sort of correction they still can't see it um, having braille text is is key they're gonna need to to have that material available for them um, getting some training on that would be very helpful for the teacher as well but things like positioning the student's desk in a way to avoid direct sunlight or glares uh, I think most people would want that, um, but people with visual impairments definitely need something like that uh, in order to give them the best opportunity to see the board. Here's a shocker, using large or bold print. Um, high contrast material, the best being white background with bold black print. Okay, that is what the, uh, the researchers have found to be the most effective in being able to present the, uh, the material the best way to visually impaired students. Now obviously things like uh, digital audio copies of books, um, that'll help too. And that, that helps with not just visual impaired, visually impaired students, but also those uh, auditory students who, who, who learn best by hearing, hearing it more so than reading it. Um, but for visually impaired students, something like an audio book, <laughs> that's a huge help for them because they're, they're now opened up to a world that they weren't before. Uh, large print books and handouts, those big books, 
um, that, that they have in elementary school. Those are key. Having those up uh, when you're doing your readings to the class. Uh, everybody's on the front carpet. You're reading the book to them. Having a large picture book um, really does convey much better than just a basic book. Not that the basic books aren't good, but if you're going to be reading to the class, you want something bigger. Um, trying to find a student that can help with note taking. Something very simple that you wouldn't think about, but is almost impossible for the visually impaired student to do in real time. You know, having a recording of the, of the lesson, that can also help. And then using some color. Now the colors need to be discussed with the students in the class, um, but, but trying to use something like, okay, we're gonna go over subject and verbs today. I'm gonna use red for the subjects and I'm gonna use green for the verbs. When you put that up on the board, it really does make it clear and a lot easier for the students to decipher which, which word is going to be the verb, which is the subject. And those visually impaired students are really going to be drawn to it quickly. Um, not saying that the other students won't because they could definitely benefit from it. But at the same time, every little bit, every little strategy, every accommodation that you can come up with in order to reach your students, uh, especially those with some sort of visual impairment, um, it's going to be key. So that's it. Um, go ahead and take a look at the PowerPoint. Tell me what you guys think, and uh, thank you so much for listening.